Prandani, uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon and really happy that you uh, made the time to be on our business spotlight interview. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about your business and uh, where you started 10 years ago? Now, thank you very much, Bert, for um, giving Joran Communication the opportunity to be part of this uh, business uh, session. Um, we we started um, this business in 2013. The journey has, this company started as a web development studio and it migrated into a digital marketing agency due to the demands that we had met in the market. Um, our business, we provide um, integrated digital marketing services for businesses in South Africa. We've been doing that for 10 years, as you've mentioned, and we have helped many businesses to integrate their marketing efforts, including their mass communication, to be able to communicate to their various stakeholders, be both their internal stakeholders, which is their employees, and their external stakeholders, which are their clients and service providers. So we help service provide, we helped our clients to be able to integrate that from the website to the intranet and uh, go into the social media mailing list, um, your WhatsApp now, WhatsApp for business, and also your SMS system. There's still people who still use SMS to communicate. Amazing. <laughs> what's, what's up is probably the best one there, isn't it? Yes, yes. So, so what do you attribute your growth and survival to? Our growth and survival has been attributed on um, our relentless effort in sales, um, which is um, uh, tied into our bidding. Uh, we bid a lot of um, contracts. We also do a lot of pitching as an agency. This allows has allowed us for people to, to remember us when they have something. We send a lot of our um, company profile to, to prospective clients um, just to introduce ourselves. And this has given us an opportunity for people to know about us. But we, we also use a bit of advertising. Mm -hmm. um, we, we do magazine advertising also to just to get clients to know us so that they know that there's a brand called Joran out there. Okay. Great stuff. And, and I think, you know, towards or during COVID, what happened to your business? Because in my case, I lost 40% of turnover. <laughs> yes. During COVID, for our business, for digital marketing, we didn't um, lose business. We actually gained business due to um, the increase in the usage of digital assets and digital tools. Um, people were communicating via digital assets, and that saw us um, a lot of clients requiring digital services, be it um, they're requiring a website or requiring an internet system, or they might be requiring that someone manages their social media or improve their social media strategy or their digital strategy to be able to communicate with clients. So we saw a bit of an increase in our sales, um, and um, it also improved um, um, yeah, our company's revenue um, during that cycle. Okay. So, Randani, when you um, started 10 years ago and where you are now, obviously there's some been some... What has been your biggest learning as an employer? Yes, as an employer, um, one thing that I've learned um, is to create a culture in an organization. Um, our organization is tied into a mission and a vision um, and is very cultured in terms of its approach. Uh, it's a very transparent and open organization um, which we... We've created a culture which people are free to work because I work a lot, a lot with creatives and yeah. uh, administrators of the business. So, and these are young people that, you know, Generation Z, very different from my generation, maybe possibly. I'm a Generation Z, but I think <laughs> I'm a bit older in, in the soul. But um, yeah, they are very different in terms of their approach and how they work. And we've created that culture that enables them to work. Inclusive in that, we also annually we have meetings, a strategic meeting. We are having one now in December, which we sit around, we look at the entire year and we strategize on what has worked, what has not worked, how can we improve our working conditions, including improving our working hours, whether we need to do remote working, um, all the different elements that has affected us within the, the year. And then when we move to the next, to the following year, we normally are ready to tackle those things. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And I, I agree with you. You know, people will follow you for your culture. They will stay because of uh, the vision and mission of the business. And obviously, if it's greater than them and they work towards something meaningful, really great. So balancing your personal life with your business, you know, the demands of running a business, how do you, how do you manage that? 
Oh, it's a quite difficult thing, eh? So one thing I would say is that it's, okay, myself, from my side, what I've done is that Fridays, like for instance, from Friday and Saturdays, I ensure that I don't work at all. Something that I, I decided, I think, around two years ago, because I, I was constantly working, including on weekends, but I took a decision that from six o'clock every Friday to until Sunday, whether it's an email or something, I don't I don't touch that. So um, to, to manage work and life balance is always difficult. For for instance, even for me, it's even far worse because I work with my wife. So we work every day. We are the directors of the business. Yes. So um, one thing that we, we agreed on is that we normally focus on the business every day. And then um, when we go home, we normally talk less about the business. It's something that is not as easy that yeah. you won't talk but we do talk about it. But it's also also a strength that helps us that, you know, where, where I don't see something, she will normally see or she will normally provide advice on that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've tried to create a very healthy environment by just allowing myself to switch off when I, when I need to. Yes. And, um, I allow also to have systems and delegate. Um, one of the things that I learned late was delegation in the business. So I've tried by all means now, um, even in our strategy, we give people responsibilities and they own that part of portion of their, of their part of the business. So they will normally run with that. And if there's anything that goes wrong, they are responsible for that portion. So that is it actually alleviate a bit of um, um, my responsibility to be looking after everything. Okay. Yeah. So when, obviously as you grow, you, you bring on new people. So recruiting new team members. What qualities are you looking for in your twenties? Normally, what I look for the first thing I always look for myself is academic qualifications, whether their transcript, whether someone was good at school, how good were they, um, and that just gives me an idea of whether they were serious about their studies. But um, I've hired people who are not very who are not academic, but hired them because of um, how cultured they are in terms of delivering work and how responsible were they. Including some of them, we hire them um, in terms of uh, creatives, in terms of their talent. Yeah. So you normally find someone who's uneducated, who is just a, t a talented person. And um, we normally look in terms of whether they will integrate well in our team. Okay. Uh, but in most cases at the foundation level, uh, my wife is a very um pro women so we hire around 60 percent of our staff is women so just to give women um a chance and um we 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 have done that deliberately so that we can also provide employment to women yes. um and um that's how those are the things that normally navigate into my dashboard when i'm hiring whether someone yes. um is good academically are they a talent you know um are they a lady you know, um, things like that. And that's what gravitate us in terms of um, what we do. Sometimes we do hire people that don't really gel with our culture. Hence what I told you in terms of, um, we normally do our annual assessment of our culture mm -hmm. every year so that people can voice our opinions. I always have an open door policy in my office to say people must highlight things that are not, that are not working in the organization, you know, things that they don't, they feel um, um, uh, whether cultural, even if they, they come to me from a cultural perspective or a religious perspective, this is this is something that I feel strongly about that I I, I don't like in this office. So, and yeah. then we take a we take a chance to look at that. Oh, excellent, thank you for that. So, what are some of the common misconceptions people have about entrepreneurs and running a business? One of the things that when I started the business with um, when I started the business, there are a lot of people that. I started with who were like peers who were running other businesses, their own businesses. But one thing that was very prevalent, which I always find from new business people, is that they think that to you when you run a business, you must know people, <laughs> or you must you must have connections somewhere, or you must you know you must know this and this, yeah. and that has been a very um, I said um, misconception because uh, business is not run mostly from my perspective or from my own um, experiences that you normally get business from strangers. The same way I got an interview from you. I don't know you. 
but yeah. we were in contact. We've never met, but mm. we got in touch and we have this interview. But possibly if I had known you, you would not have given me the interview. So that's what normally people don't get to understand, that you get businesses from strangers, people you don't know, people who are looking for services. If you're good at that service, people will, will give you the business. A person that is looking for a service is looking to accomplish a mission of that service. So they're not... Yeah. They're just looking for the best person to do that work. They're not looking for someone they know. They could have called their uncle or whoever to do the thing. But in most cases, you'll find even myself in business, when we do our uh, um, supply chain, we buy we buy from the best. You know, we yeah. procure, whether we're procuring laptops, we buy from Apple. I don't know Tim Cook, but I, I buy yeah. I buy most of my, my computing from from Tim Cook, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know anyone at Telcom. We procure internet from Telcom. Yes. I don't know anyone, you know, the desks that I'm sitting on, the, the company that provided the furniture, we don't know them. So that's the misconception that a lot of people who are coming to the business don't know. Yeah. And um, I think if, 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 that, if many people can change their minds on that and start building a product or a service or yes. really focusing on customer experience or focusing on providing more value, then they would normally find people who are willing to give them business. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think um, you know quite often people start a business and they have some sort of connection somewhere, but that doesn't last. And you know, yes. a business that has 80 or 90% of its turnover coming from one client, it's not going to survive. It's just not going to work. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, what advice would you give new business owners around financial management? Um, a new business owner on financial management, I would say maybe possibly, first of all, get an accountant um, when you start your business. It's going to be very important unless you're an accountant yourself, but you're going to need an accountant on your side. I would also say get a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> on your side <laughs> or subscribe to some sort of a law thing. Uh, those two things are very important when you're starting, even though law is not part of finance, but can affect you financially. Yeah. And... Um, in terms of management, the business when you start is going to be very difficult. I would advise anyone in financial in, in the finance to invest most of their um, uh, revenue back into the business for the first two to three or four years of the business. Yeah. Try by all means to invest as much back into the business. Actually, you're going to continuously be be looking at your um, your business um, money going. Even today, we we make money. Um, um, one thing that I could tell a business owners is that you're never going to have money. Even Jeff Bezos doesn't have money. He sees a lot of billions coming in. He signs off a lot of billions going out <laughs> to do something or to, 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 to create a new company. So we see a lot of numbers as business owners, but we never get to, to enjoy them. So it's one thing you must always know that you're not going to enjoy those numbers. They, they will normally go to servicing the business because the business is more like a person. As it grows, it has more demands. Yeah. There's more things that are needed. It has to deal with a lot of risks. It has to deal with a lot of new service providers. There's a lot of things that um, we as business people pay for. So you, you, uh, the, as a business owner, you're just going to be in the middle somewhere, <laughs> seeing numbers. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. Honestly, um, I remember one, I had a CEO that I reported to, and he always said, you know, how much money is in the top? And uh, that's, that's what counts, not anything else. Is there money left? <laughs> At the end of the day, and is it in the top? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So five years from now, where do you see Joran being positioned? Where do you see the business? We have positioned ourselves as uh, trying to be a leading digital agency in Africa, and we we are working towards that. We have some tactics that we have been trying to position ourselves as an as an African digital agency. And the reason is mostly to target companies that are doing business in Africa. Yeah. And mostly South African companies. We're not really saying we want to be a digital agency that is doing business in African countries, but we 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 want to represent companies that also want to do business in Africa. And yeah. one of the things that we've been looking for is um to do either mergers and acquisitions, be it in the African space. Yeah. And it's something that I think in five years we could look into. We could be somewhere in that, uh, in terms of whether we've uh, measured with another organization or we have, we have, uh, acqu uh, we have acquired another organization. No, uh, so but being in Africa, providing um, the same services, our mm -hmm. services are going to change as we're going along with the with the coming of the AI. 
yeah. uh, with the coming of automation, it's going to really change everything that we know about our business, especially in the digital space. Yeah. So we are looking at those kind of things that maybe possibly we might not be a digital agency that is doing mass communication from um, from an employee perspective, but we might be using a lot of artificial intelligence yeah. to really solve clients um, uh, mass, uh, mass communication and marketing efforts on a digital level. So those are the kind of things that we think we're going to be in, in, the, in the next five years. If you had a magic wand and you had some magic dust you could sprinkle over your business, which area of the business needs that magic dust? Hmm. Uh, I think if I had the magic wand, I would normally be, it would normally be in sales. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it will be to increase my, um, uh, my, my, uh, my bid success rate. Yeah. It around 5%. If I could get it to 50% or I, I could win every other bid that I go to, <laughs> I would use that magic wand to win those um, uh, those bids. But um, I think sales is one of the most difficult part here in the business. Yeah. It's getting new clients and actually not only sales, but also the margins that you get after the sales. So onboarding the client and retaining the margins that you require within the yeah. projects, most of the projects that we run, hence we've invested a lot of money on project management is through, is, 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 is because there's, there's a lot of um, 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 uh, loss of uh, revenue. Okay. Um, projects go overboard, they go beyond the project timelines, um, they cost us money, and those are the kind of things that we struggle with as a business. Um, and uh, it's something that we would really look forward to improve. You said, what is your current conversion rate? 5%. 5%. Okay. Even to get it to 10% would we'll double the business, isn't it? So that would be great. Yeah, yeah. It's very difficult to get 10%. Eh? <laughs> Not everyone wants to give you business. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the other thing is the yeah. other thing is not even the conversion rate is because it's not even about whether we can get a there are contracts we can see, okay, you can bid and you can get, but the pricing does not fit where we are at, you see, yeah. as a business in terms of our of what we need to pay, the expenses, yeah. you see. So you find that you no, know, um we will normally just bid with the pricing that we think uh, is correct right. for the market, but you normally not get you normally know the chances of getting this is slim, maybe. Yeah. yeah, you don't even have a chance, but you're just hoping that if someone is slipped with in terms of submission or they have not done well, maybe you could be able to be um, the person that wins that bid. Yes. yes. Thank you for that. So last question. What is the one question that I should have asked you but didn't? And what's the answer? <laughs> Uh, I think maybe possibly the question uh, should have been maybe how difficult it is to uh, to to start a business, um, and maybe the answer on that is should be um, it's very difficult, you know, to 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 start and manage a business. Mm -hmm. It requires someone with uh, perseverance, commitment. It actually requires someone who's a bit crazy. Yes, in a sense that they they have to endure. Um, um, you know, they have to endure losses, they have to endure mm -hmm. working with stakeholders and clients. Um, you have to smile a lot where you are, you don't even have, that day, you don't, you don't even have to smile. Yes. You have to, you have to lead a, a team of diverse people mm -hmm. um, who sometimes don't understand each other, even from a language perspective, backgrounds. Um, who have a different vision from you, different perspective, you have to align them together. Yeah. So those are the kind of difficult things that I think in business, um, um, uh, yeah, the difficulty of the business is not, and you know, the other thing is that when you start, people always think that you're going to be successful, you know, yeah. there's no guarantee in the business. Absolutely. And even, yeah, even when you have been in the business for a long time, there's no guarantee you're going to remain in business. So it's always a continuous effort to to really um, invest in, in continuous sales, um, continuous client satisfaction, Absolutely. and I think that is um, very important in a business. Yeah. Well, Rendani, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your openness, and I hope uh, and wish you lots of success in your business. Okay.
you know, thank you very much, Brett. I thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be part of this business series. Thank you so much.